So the partner trial is uh, what's called a neoadjuvant trial, which just means that you give chemotherapy up front before surgery. Um, and it asks the question whether adding a, a DNA damage repair inhibitor targeted therapy called a laparib or limpasa to standard chemotherapy containing platinum drugs actually produces a situation where at surgery you've got less tumour left so what we would call pathological complete response, ideally. So that the overall aim of the trial is to see if adding a new targeted agent gives a better response at surgery. Okay, and in terms of patient recruitment, are there any criteria for entry? Yeah, so for entry you have to be a basal type triple negative. So we do some basic immunohistochemistry testing that allows us to define whether or not a patient qualifies to be basal triple negative or you have to be BRCA positive um, of any ER status. Um, so if you're BRCA positive, it doesn't matter about anything else, you're in the trial. Okay, and how has recruitment gone so far? Uh, well, triple negatives are about 15 to 20% of breast cancers, and so within just over a year, we've managed to recruit, I think, 108 patients. So pretty good, actually. Uh, that's only using 17 centres in the UK so far, and we're going to open about... 30 in the UK and we've got uh, five international hubs that are at some point in trying to open as well. Any ideas when some data might, might start coming out? So the trial split into three stages. So because this is the first time a laparib has been used in the um, curative setting, uh, there was a, a understandable concern that for curative patients we were adding in a targeted therapy in with quite a heavy going chemo uh, regimen. Um, so we had a safety stage, which was our first stage, which we've now completed the recruitment for, so we should have the uh, analysis results of that by the end of quarter one, 2018. So, so that'll be interesting, because though I, I don't know the results, obviously, um, but my own patients seem to have done very well. So. I'll be interested to see the, the results too from around the country. So. Well, we'll keep an ear out for those when they come then. Yeah, so stage two is asking the question of when you should give the elaparib. So whether you should give the elaparib two days before you give the, start the chemotherapy or whether you should give the elaparib and, or start the, the elaparib two days after chemotherapy. And we give it for about 12 days. Um, the reason we're asking that question is that there is some preclinical data that suggests that there might be uh, some difference in effectiveness or toxicity, depending on which of those two mm. regimens you use. So we'll, we'll, we'll have recruited sufficient patients to answer that question uh, probably by about April next year. Uh, and then we'll drop one of the research arms and then it'll be a two-armed um, study in the final stage. And we wouldn't expect the final stage to... Uh, the whole trial would be finished, would take at least another three years, I think. OK. And alongside that, you mentioned you're running a sequencing trial. Yeah, so there's a, a project that I co-lead with Professor Carlos Caldas in Cambridge, um, uh, and it's funded by our local hospital charity, Addenbrooke's Charitable Trust, and it... Um, is a whole genome sequencing project. It's for breast cancer pa uh, patients of any stage of cancer. Uh, at the moment, it's just locally run, and essentially the patient um, comes to uh, Cambridge, they are informed about the study, we can send them, and then they give us a blood sample and a tumour biopsy sample, and that's sent to our industry partner, Illumina, for sequencing. That result is then returned to us and uh, our bioinformaticians will analyse it, split it into different tiers, and tier one is the cohort of genes that we're really confident are associated with breast cancer. So that those are the results that are fed back to the patient, and those results re are received by the patient within 12 weeks of giving their biopsy. Um, and over 80% of our patients have achieved that so far. So I think we've just had a talk by Serena Nixanel sort of supporting the idea of whole genome sequencing as an important uh, step going forward. And I would completely agree with that, actually, for breast cancer. Between that and Alaparib, it sounds like you're edging up on some very uh, mm -hmm. cutting-edge personal medicine personalised medicine trials all coming together at once. Yeah, so we, we're seeing a real um, 
what's a really interesting uh, uh, moment, if you like, where we have patients who have kindly agreed to um, go into both the partner uh, clinical trial and also into the personalised breast cancer uh, program, uh, and and they are fully aware that, with the exception of the tier one results that they that they get um, within twelve weeks, that it, a lot of this is altruism. Um, um, and that they will only receive a certain amount of their personal results. Um, but we have the opportunity to look at their molecular signature as they're being treated on their chemotherapy. So the old style way of doing this is you run a trial, you finish the trial, you retrospectively then do all the sequencing. So from the day the first patient went in to the day you get your sequencing results, it can take about seven years. So now we are seeing that within 12 weeks so um, it's, it's, it's amazing um, and it, I think when we have a specific number of patients who have gone into partner and personalised breast, uh, breast, breast cancer programme uh, we'll probably start to look at those in some detail and give some idea about responders and non-responders. Quite the exciting future to look forward to then. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, well, it's, it's an interesting place to be. Okay, well that covers both those trials. Is there anything you can think that we've missed? Any glaring omissions? So the partner trial is supported by uh, AstraZeneca and the translational um, collection is supported by Cancer Research UK. And I think I've already mentioned that the Personalised Breast Cancer Programme, the first stage of it is supported by Addenbrooke's Charitable Trust.